Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Luke. I'm gonna show you how to do week 32 right now. So I've already got some of my visualization put together. I've got my columns and rows calculation, which I provided to you on my view. And I've also got report date out here uh, and state on Mark. So it's sort of already creating that map. And what I want to do with this data is show you uh, how to break up your aggregation. Technically it's already in the data, but uh, you'll notice that the people counts are actually pre-aggregated. I'm going to exclude these null values and you'll see it's already a running total. Uh, to get to the dailies, I need to take the current day and subtract off the total. And the way I do that is first by creating a calculated field. And we're going to call this calculated field daily. And I'm just going to say sum of people positive case count. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to do a lookup and I'm going to look up the previous value and I do that by pasting back in that sum of positive people count and looking back one value. This will give me a daily count. So I'm just now going to drag this back out on my view and you'll see sure enough it's rolling up really nicely there. From there I'm going to actually get into the normalization. You'll notice that some states have had far greater cases than others. So how do I normalize that? I'm going to create a second calculated field that's just going to use the window max calculation and with that window max calculation I'm just going to paste in daily here and I'll call this uh, daily max. Let's move on to the next step which is to get some labels over each state and we're going to do that by creating a new calculated field and we're going to say um, technically we need a seven day rolling average so we're going to say window average and then we're going to say daily divided by daily max and then uh, we're going to provide two other arguments negative six going back six days from the existing day uh, and then zero to include the current date as well so this is going to give us a seven day rolling average let's just call it a row value for now because we're going to come back and edit this calculation and we're going to do a little trick with it to get our labels to show up so here we go, I'm just dragging this out on my view. And now we could just add labels by just saying show mark labels, min max, and then you know allowing just the maximum value. I'm just gonna double click here and paste in that calculation. So we're just gonna paste in daily here. And I'm gonna put this on label. And there's our daily values. Change the mark type to area. And then let's get those labels over the top of the states. We're going to do that. We calculate the beginning of our time period, March 1st, the end, uh, July 31st, and find that midpoint. And then we do that with this calculation here. Uh, if I just edit it, take a look, uh, this calculates the difference, and then uh, we find the midpoint from this calculation. So I'm just going to take midpoint now, drag that out, and set it to an exact date. I'm going to move it over to the side here and then I'm going to right click and um, well I'm going to right click and make this dual axis and also synchronize these axes so that gets this midpoint between the dates here and we'll eventually put our labels there so we're going to change this text on midpoint now uh, from window average to uh, state name I'm just going to click drag and replace st state name over the top there and we don't need measure values on either of or measure names on either of these. So I'm getting rid of that. Uh, and midpoint also can just be text. Now my trick here is I've got two different mark types. One that is all based on a single point midpoint and another that is based on the report date, many dates in the data set. Uh, and midpoint itself actually is a collection of every single report date because we've created this placeholder calculation. So I'm going to edit row value and I'm actually going to break this out and do two calculations based on the level of aggregation between the two. So I can just say if count distinct report date is equal to one, then I want to return this window average else. I'm just going to say 1.4 and that's just a placeholder to put the label on my viz. I'm going to hit OK here. And now you'll notice my labels have shown up and the lot leaves me with one step to go here, which is adding the zero line. Um, but first, let's get rid of all of the formatting. So I'm just going to go format. I'm going to put in row dividers that are white. 
And I'm going to do the same with column dividers, just adding just a little bit of a divider, making it white. And I'm going to get rid of my grid lines, my zero lines, uh, just so none of those are showing up. And then finally, just right click on row value, add reference line. And I've already got a zero line parameter already created. I'm just going to say, let's make no labels, no tooltips. And then that formatting, let's pick the largest line here for now. Uh, the reason I'm picking the largest line is because it actually is all dependent on the size of that divider that I put in. And um, I'll just make that a little bit darker here. And there you have it. Last step, I could do formatting the tooltips and then it's just, you know, hide the axes. So I'm going to uncheck show header here, get rid of them, and that's it. Uh, that's our viz for this week, week 32. The couple challenges you really had here, uh, you know, converting uh, cumulative data into dailies, then doing that normalization, and third, actually adding average. So lots of different layers. And then if you really picked up on the trick, doing this row value, the last part, two calculations in one, depending on the level of aggregation in the data. That's it, week 32, thanks. Uh, we'll catch you in a couple months because I'm off next month because we have our community month coming up in September. So I won't be back till, you know, October. Take care. Later.